Hello there. So today we'll talk about resiliency, high availability, reliability, and fault tolerance. It seems there is a lot of confusion when to use what words, and I have seen people are using these interchangeably. So let's understand when to use resiliency. What is meant by high availability versus reliability, and what is meant by fault tolerance. Let's get started. So high availability means the system or the application should be available all the times and that we can achieve by doing the replications so if we have uh, two system two application running then we can replicate it to more than one and so that uh, if one goes down other will be available and uh, resiliency means it can try to recover from its failure so it will do the retry so availability is really achieved through redundant set of each component such that any single point of failure is avoided a special attention need to be paid to accept interconnectivity of components A and B so that every single failure component A or B can be bypassed with, without loss of functionality. High availability about double TCU compared to non high availability system. Resiliency setup, words, setup avoids TCU doubling but need more investment into inbuilt error recovery mechanism. Second image is for resiliency. So I mean by this. So, Resiliency is the ability to recover from temporary failures or through some explicit error handling and error correction. Like before, in the 99% availability case, only a small amount of steps will fail in average when performing a business scenario. You would pass in every, uh, uh, around 495 out of 500 things successfully and only 5 will go wrong. So what is meant by resiliency? So resiliency is the ability to recover quickly. That is, if a site 1 goes down immediately and then it should recover and come back again operational or if a disk drive fails another spare disk drive quickly is added to a storage pool system resiliency includes eliminating single point of failures in system design into critical systems now what is meant by quality of service it is the technology that enables a, specif a specified service to receive a higher quality of service than other specified services therefore service providers need to determine which service has the highest priority among the service that they provide to their customers. For example, voice over internet protocol VOIP system typically are prioritized to ensure sufficient network bandwidth is always available to avoid any traffic delay or degradation of voice quality. Other services such as web browsing will be prioritized at lower level. Why? Because they are not sensitive to delays. The new net neutra neutrality law gives ISP a right to provide a higher quality of service to a specified set of customers. In case of high availability, it is about having multiple redundant systems that enable zero runtime or, degra or degradation for a single failure. High availability can easily be implemented in cluster system and it has two modes. One active mode, both systems are running and quick available and second is active passive mode. One system is active while the other is standby but can become active visually within a matter of seconds. Now what is understood by fault tolerance? So fault tolerance, it is the ability of system to suffer a fault by continue to operate, but continue to operate. How can the system have this capability? By adding redundant components such as additional disk with a redundant array of inexpensive disk RAID array, multiple power supplies, multiple network interfaces, etc. Resiliency is not the same thing as high availability. Some, some, sometimes people con get confused on this. So resiliency is the ability to handle failures. This includes high availability, but also includes factorial rate, rate limiting, security, management, and monitoring. What is meant by network level resiliency? Network level resil resiliency includes resiliency in the topology, including physical and control panel resiliency. This means using the hardware for failure detection, prevention, and recovery. For example, using stacking, multiple links, and so on. This is where to use a defense in depth approach. This means using several layers of resiliency. And as an example, you may have many ECMP root links. Also, you may also enable UDLD on the links to detect layer one failures. Use a modular design in the control plane. One example of this is to use root summarization. Throttling can prevent overwhelming the control plane. The goal is to isolate failures to a single area. Now, when we talk about system level resiliency, this is to provide resiliency at the device level. This includes dual power supplies, dual supervisors, SSO, NSF, and so on. It also includes software resiliency, including security features and control plane hardening. Over 
looking this can result in high CPU load, TCAM, starvation and similar errors. Consider using control plane polishing, limiting flooding and hardening spanning tree. Also consider using QoS and storm control to prevent overwhelming the data plane. Now what is operational resiliency? So these are the different types of resiliency we are talking right now, system level. Now we'll talk about operational resiliency. This is about how you manage the network. In particular, think about change management and change window. Software updates also fall into this category. Some platform supports ISSU in service software upgrade or similar for non-disruptive updates. Availability can simply be understood as system uptime. That is the percentage of time the st storage system uh, is available or the application is available and operational, allowing data to be accessed. Highly available system are designed to minimize downtime and avoid loss of service. All organizations expect to achieve high availability for their application and business services. This is not achieved by single IT components alone. High availability depends on many IT infrastructure components, including the storage, hardware, software to work in concert as expected. Minimizing downtime by quickly restoring essential services in the event of failure. So availability is typically calculated in terms of number of nine. So one nine is equal to 90% availability, two nine is 99% availability, three nine is 99.9 and availability and four nine is equal to 99.99% availability and so on. The converse of availability is downtime. So if storage system has been has an annual SL of seven nine availability, it would suffer just 3.15 seconds of downtime in a year. To improve availability, organizations generally use replication techniques that create redundant data copies to enable continuous data access, avoiding single point of failures to improve data availability. Now, resiliency describes the ability of system to uh, self-fail, recover, and continue operating even after encountering failure, outage, and security incidents. High resiliency does not mean there is a high data availability. It just means that the storage infrastructure is equipped in enough to overcome disruptions. Resiliency is not a standard metric. It spans business continuity, incidents, response, and recovery techniques to reduce the magnitude and duration of disruptive events. Resiliency of a storage system can be improved through redundancy of failure and by building in software defined intelligence to automatically detect issues and self in a short span of time. Fault tolerance is similar to the concept of availability but it goes one step further to guarantee zero runtime. While a highly available storage system may have manual interruption, a fault tolerance system will have no service interruption. Having a more complex design as a fault tolerance system is typically quite expensive to maintain. It will involve running active inactive copies of data all the time and with the necessary automation to fail over when encountered with any components of a storage system failing and causing downtime. And this failover will be non disruptive in such a way that the application and data access are not impacted at all. The business continues to function as expected. Now durability. Durability refers to the continuous persistence of data. Business will have long term data retention goal. This is achieved by improving the durability of the data and the storage infrastructure preserving it. Especially in the context of object storage where data is achieved and preserved for a longer term, it is important to achieve high durability. A high level of durability ensures that the data does not suffer from bit rot, degradation or any form of corruption or data loss. Durability is typically associated with the infrastructure of storing the data. It refers to the probability that the storage system will work as expected. A storage system may be available for a certain period of time, but it may not work as expected. In that case, the reliability will be low. Various factors can contribute to increasing reliability of the system. It is easy to make. It is not easy to measure reliability. One common metrics is that a metrics which is used to increase to indicate the reliability is mean time between failure. MTBF is the predicate elapsed time between the inherent failures of a storage system during normal operations. If MTBF is high, it is an indicator that the reliability is low. So thank you so much for watching today's video and if you think the videos are helpful, do like the video and subscribe to the channel.